discussion this morning as we talk about deliverance. And I'm hoping to conclude, conclude the process of deliverance today and to get to the process, the exciting component, what I call to be set free. Hallelujah. To be set free. When a little baby eaglet is in his nest with his mother, you understand? He is captured by his lack of his ability, he has not grown enough, he is limited just to the nest. Mm -hmm. He can look out, the other eagles fly and look around, but he can't come out of the nest. If he come out of the nest, he'll die. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, the eagle lifts the eaglet and de deliver him out of the nest and put him where he can start to see the open air, the open terrain. He sets him what? Free. To fly, to explode his ability. He has flying in him, but until age deliver him to release his flying ability, he is what? Trapped. Hmm. <laughs> Many of us are like that. We have, you see, we are made in the image of God, so which means we have godly potential. Mm -hmm. But most of us die with a godly potential what? In us. Trapped. Yeah. It never come out. What God wants to do is develop you and move you to the point that you can release. Remember. Jesus put a mandate on your life. It's the same mandate as Genesis 1, 26. You have to have dominion. He said, look, you, my God, brothers and sisters, I expect you to do what? Greater things than me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That chart should scare you. Jesus turned to his, the human species and said, and you shall do greater things than me. In essence, he goes, I come to heal you, to deliver you, and set you free, and to show you how it's done, but I'm just doing, you understand, an example. When you go to school, teachers do this. Teachers don't do the whole scenario. They do a what? An example. But then you have to do all, the whole what? The whole text. Mm -hmm. But it's what Jesus was doing. He's called the great one. Teacher. He said, I have come to live for three years. I have come to heal your delivery. And I'm going to show you an example. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to show you how to heal people. I'm going to show you how to raise the dead. I'm going to show you how to overcome the enemy. I'm going to show you how to glorify God. I'm going to show you how to operate in the kingdom power. I'm going to show you how to operate in wisdom and understanding. He said, I come from above. You understand? Know I'm, I'm going to show you how to stay with the Father. Everything you see the Father do, you will do. Because everything I see the Father do, I do. Amen. He said, I'm going to show you how to operate. And he goes, after I show you this example, I'm going to leave. And Peter goes, no, Lord, you can't leave. He said, if I don't leave, you can't become. Because I'll do it all for you all the time. Mm -hmm. You'll always be a child. You understand what I'm saying? So Jesus showed us the example. He said, I'll show you when a man dead, he can go back days after he raised him up. I'll show you when a man hides the seal, how to open the blind. Hallelujah. I'll show you when there's no physical food, how to transfer stuff from one dimension into a No, sir. It was just an example. He had his work to do. Teachers come. When you sit down in a the classroom, they go, okay, we'll be working on algebra. And they show you various scenarios. But then you have to do what? The work. Where we are terrible at is doing our homework. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're not paying attention in the class. Yeah. And second, we don't do the, what I call the follow through. Yeah. The follow through. It's not a pastor only. Yeah. What a pastor is, yes, he's called to teach, etc. But even the pastor has to do what? His own work. Mm -hmm. Jesus was preaching, teaching, and what? Healing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yes. So it's like, may as well do the homework. Mm -hmm. You ever notice when they come to market, whether you do your homework or not, the teacher still mark the paper? Mm -hmm. The fact you don't do it doesn't omit you from getting your paper what? Mark. Mm -hmm. Whether you are ready for life or not, life going to test you. Yeah. Life going to say, let's see if you're ready. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the example that was demonstrated and illustrated and recorded, you understand? You're, is applicable. If it is applicable, are you applying it? Are you, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got to learn how to do these things and do it well. We have to learn how to navigate and operate effectively. And one of the things that limits us is because we are in there by several challenges. Mm -hmm. Several challenges hinder us. Mm -hmm. Amen? And you have to know how to get around these things. Yeah. And you are fortunate. God do not expect you to get around it on your own. He says, send you a helper. I've sent you someone to counsel you when you don't know what to do and what to say and how to think. I've sent you someone when you feel overwhelmed to comfort you. And when you can't fight, can your energy run out, I've sent someone to advocate for you. And when you can't stand, you'll stand it. Look at somebody and say, we're not doing this thing on our own. Mm -hmm. 
We're not doing this thing at our That's why we call it grace. That's why, That's we, why we call, we call it, it grace. grace. When I can't stand someone standing. When I can't, when I can't stand, stand someone standing. When I don't understand someone counsel me. When I don't understand someone counsel me. When I can't fight someone advocate and fight for me. When I can't fight someone advocate and fight for me. And when I need help, he's always helping me. And when I need help, he's always helping me. Yes, the Bible is the Lord. You need to understand. He said, I'm going to leave you like an offering to pass through the exam, and you don't know how the exam works. Mm. You understand this process? This I started this process talking to the Spirit of the Lord. He being an example. He being an example. Amen. Jesus loved to preach or teach, but then he loves to demonstrate. Any good teacher whose work is waiting, go. Don't just talk about things. They have the ability to what? Demonstrate. Amen. They'll tell you or explain it, then they'll show you, then they'll check for what? Comprehension. And Jesus did both. Jesus came and he, he started preaching. The Bible says he started his public ministry, he started preaching. Then he get his 12 disciples, then he started what? Teaching. Then he started taking them around and showing them how to raise the dead, how to open the eyes, how to feed towels. He started showing them. And then he wanted to check for comprehension. So look what he did. He got, now I'm going to send you guys out, go and do it. Let's see if you understand what I've been preaching, what I've been teaching, and what I've been showing. Any good teacher, I don't care if it's carpentry, I don't care if it's computers, there should be four steps. You should talk about it, meaning let the ideas be known. Preaching is like, I am kind of promoting my ideas, my concept. When before when a teacher comes into class, they tell you what the subject is going to be like. What are some of the things to expect, etc. Then they start teaching you. You understand? How to understand it and how to interpret it and you conceptualize it. Then they'll show you. But then finally, they expect you to do it. So Jesus sent out the 72 and said, go for it now and show me if you understand. When you understand this, you understand why he did in Mark 9, 17. He go, how long must I be with you? I have preached you the concept. I have bring it to your awareness. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have teach you how the concept work. When you used to ask, are you, are you talking to us or the people? I explain who I'm talking to and which perspective I'm talking from. I show you how it works. Mm -hmm. I'll take you when I go to do things. Amen? Why then can't you heal this man's son who have the spirit that's dominating him to hone him? He expects result at that point. You see, it's always beginning preaching. Then you come to post-baptism where there's lots of teaching. And in the process of the relationship or the fellowship, you're going to see much opportunity of demonstration. Mm -hmm. But then it comes a time where you, you understand, must illustrate what was, what was demonstrated to you. This is the process of growth. If this is not happening, if every time you need a person to keep preaching, the preaching, meaning it, you keep forgetting the ideas, the concept. When the same thing has to be preached again and again, you're having major trouble. The Bible says when something is preached to them, the enemy snatch it before they can what? Learn it. Before they can believe it or understand it. So you need to get it preached so you can get an idea of what it's talking about. You see, my brother's a contractor, and if I go on his job, he's a fool to just let me walk and start working. He'll start telling me you know, so what is expected and how it works and what's, what's going to happen and what to expect. That is preaching. Making the ideas known or clear. But then that's wonderful. I heard what, what, he, what he's doing and what he's planning to do. Yeah, preaching deals like a lot with big picture. Teaching deals with the specific or the navigation in or through the picture. Demonstration, you understand, is a collaboration of preaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then you must carry it up in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we see Jesus... In Romans, Sister Jing, you have it? Beautiful. Let's read the scripture together here. But also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. So look at somebody and say, God wanted to give us righteousness. God, God wanted to give us righteousness. You see, you need to understand this because in our time it's a little difficult to understand. In, in, in ancient time or in a kingdom, when you are accredited righteousness, it's like you are marked where everything with you is fine. Everything with you is good. It's like to have perfect credit. Mm. Imagine you have perfect credit throughout the world and anywhere, and you got a sign. Anywhere you go, to go, give that person anything they want. Mm. That person, credit is fine. 
So God wanted to accredit man with the right to be here, with the right to be effective, you understand? With the right to have a, an abundant life, a glorious life. So he said, in order to accredit you with this righteousness, I need to do something. Because man had messed up his credit. I'm talking in terms that you can comprehend. Man had totally messed up his credit history. It was a disaster. He did not credit with God because he was disobedient and unfaithful to God. He did not credit with his fellow man because he hurt and cheated his fellow man. He did not credit with himself because he was fighting in himself, the soul and the spirit and the body. The Bible said they waged war against each other. Mm. He did not credit with his environment because his environment, had, the Bible said, had become like bronze. Mm. There was a time when man can speak to the hurt, just like God said, you understand? Fruits come forth, and it did. But because he turned against God, he no longer had what? Accessibility. When he tried to do it, it hurt his going credit, what? Deny. So he had no appropriate position for effectiveness. The challenge is what frustrates someone like me. Today, through Jesus, we have been restored to right credit. But we're still operating like we're not accredited. Like we're in debt. Like we, mashallah, mercy. God said, I want to give them righteousness. I want to restore perfect credit with me. Perfect credit in themselves. Perfect credit with a land and peace among men. You see, I'm going to accredit righteousness. Amen. I'm going to decree it as a king. And I'm not just going to be a bully and decree it. I'm going to pay you understand, the righteous justice based on my stipulation to make sure the debt was paid. And then I shall decree it. The human species is righteous that has received, you understand, my accreditation of Jesus. So he said, I want to give human righteousness for us, amen, to who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. So he said, all who believe in Jesus, that I raised him from the dead, that he's my son and make him their Lord, I'm going to accredit them with righteousness. So you are not righteous because of anything you do. You are, if there's anything you do, this is you do it. You are righteous because you believe. Hallelujah. You are righteous because you believe. You're righteous because you are nice to Sister Sharon. Uh -uh. You're righteous because you are nice to Sister Glora. You're righteous because you tell my sister it's her birthday today. Mm -hmm. You are righteous because you believe. And not just righteous here, righteous throughout the universe. Righteous with God, righteous with yourself, righteous with the planet. So what you should be focusing on, I have this thing called walking it out, as, as Abraham had to do. You have to learn to walk out righteousness. Exercise it. You ever had a kink somewhere? You ever sit too long or you pat your foot too long and it gets kind of numb and you got to walk it out? Mm -hmm. You got to, you see, righteousness has to be walked out. For 2012, we're trying to walk out righteousness. Do you understand? All these teachings I'm trying to teach you through the Spirit of the Lord is to teach you how to walk out. Amen. You got to work that kink out. Yes. Paul went, when, when Paul see the Hebrews, he goes, by now you should be expert at righteousness. Mm. But you're like babes. I can't even talk how to use righteousness in a, an effective way. I have to treat you like children. You still need milk. Mm. I can't even give you rice. Don't talk about bone and beef. Mm. You see, when righteousness is fully comprehended, it's called you're operating in meat and bone dimension. Mm. You really get it. You know to understand, know to navigate it. Mm. Pastor, by now, you should be illustrating to others, just like Jesus preached, teach, demonstrate, you see, and send out. You should be doing the same. But you, go, you still need someone to remind you the elementary ideas. Mm. Preach to you again and again. Every day someone preaches to you, then we come, oh, Brother Courtney, we're preaching to you, and if you only learn this, it's going to be trouble. So the enemy comes and he is preaching to you about righteousness. I know you're right with God, and right with the planet, and right with you, and right with your fellow man, and right with your blessing. The enemy comes, did you work with the Beyonce dance? <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's preaching Beyonce to you, and teaching you, that, you know, the, the whatsoever she do. And all of a sudden, he's, she, the, you're demonstrating the dance, and you're teaching others. And as a result, you can't walk out your what? Your righteousness. Yeah. What's supposed to be unique about the church is their ability, you understand, to demonstrate righteousness. That which was preached, that which was learned because it was teached, that which was demonstrated. Mm. 
You see, and that which can be performed or illustrated because of the three. Mm. You understand me, church? Amen. Look at somebody and say, keep talking to me about righteousness. Keep talking keep talking about to me. Let's keep teaching each other about righteousness. Let's keep teaching each other about righteousness. Let's keep demonstrating righteousness. Let's keep demonstrating righteousness. We're going to walk it out to the glory of God. This is the process. Once you be believe in Jesus, the enemy, don't let the enemy lie to you. You're not righteous. You just do this again. Get lost. Mm. I'm righteous because I believe. I'm not righteous because of my righteousness. I'm righteous because of the king decreed righteousness. Hallelujah. Do you understand me? Yeah. Are you, according to the Canadian government, a good driver because you can drive or because they give you a driver's license? When, when, when is it? Acknowledge. When they give you a what? So it is with righteousness. Amen. You are righteous when the king bestows it upon you because you meet the decree of believing in the son. Amen. Amen? Amen? So God wanted to give us something. But in order to do this, something had to be met, a requirement. Mm -hmm. The fulfillment of righteousness. He wanted to give us righteousness. But that debt had to be paid of atonement. Mm -hmm. And in verse 25, God had a challenge though. And I'll show you this challenge because I want to talk about it. In verse 25, the Bible said, He was delivered. Meaning given over. Forced over. Placed over. The Bible said, because God wanted to give human righteousness, He said, Jesus, I'm going to raise you from the dead. But humans have to die because humans have sinned. And my law, my decree as a king said, the soul that sin must die. So he said, I don't want them to die. I want them to be righteous. Mm -hmm. But Jesus goes, I don't want to die. He prayed three times to God. He said, Lord, can't you find another way to give them righteousness? No. I don't want to die. I don't want to be delivered over to the clutches of death. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't want to be in the hands of death. That is a spirit. It's a force. Mm -hmm. he, he prayed to God, treat them, Father. I have no problem with you wanting to give your hardborn children righteousness. And I have no problem, you don't want them to die. But why should I die? I don't want to die. I am not the one to sin. I know you want to give them righteousness. Can't you are God? Can't you find another way? Three times. And he begged his disciple, he goes, Can't you pray for me so that the Lord find another way than giving me, delivering me over? In ancient times, especially women, this was a great injustice happened to them. A woman or family will go and make a marriage. And she will have no sin, and at a certain point, just deliver her into that one family. And suddenly she cries and she weeps. She goes, I, I, I want to stay with my family. I want to stay with the people I know. But for one reason or the other, the Father what? Delivers her to that family. This was Jesus. He was about to deliver over to something that he had never created. He did not sin. He didn't create the debt to have to pay for it. It's like an arranged marriage. But the Bible says he was obedient unto death. Meaning, even though he didn't want to, he said, Lord, however, if you still insist and you want me to be delivered over to death, even though I don't want to die and I didn't create the death, I will go. So you can give your earthly children what? Righteousness. So the Bible said, he was delivered over to death for our sins, not for his own. And was raised to life for our justification. Mm -hmm. So God said, I'm going to deliver you. Mm -hmm. And he did give Jesus something. He got, so I, because you're obedient, and only a blood pure enough like yours can pay for all the human species. Mm -hmm. Because one Adam sin, it has to be an exact replica. A mm -hmm. second Adam has to die. Because all human beings are what? Adam. Yes. So the human species sin. So the human species has to die, and then the human species has to what? Be raised. So you go, you as a replica, born in the flesh of Adam, you understand, shall die. Then I shall raise you to a life, and I shall raise all of the other human into your life. He said, you shall see the fulfillment of your joy as I raise, just because I raise you, I raise all of them into you. It's why Paul goes, are you guys are the only Christ raising? We are also risen into the second one, Adam. Amen? The Bible said, 
he shall enjoy the joy of his what? Travail of his pain. When a mother is going through giving birth, it's called travail. But after the baby is born, she what? She experienced the joy of her what? Travail. When Jesus was dying, it was no fun, as you know. But the Bible says, after I raise you and I raise your children, you shall experience the joy of your what? Travail. Mm -hmm. So you were delivered. You see, Jesus was delivered into death. You see, one of the things we don't quite understand, you need to study the process of death. Personally, you shouldn't, but if you want to get an understanding, death is not a place you want to go. Mm -hmm. Death suffocates and stifles your spirit, man, mm -hmm. your soul. It is a slow, and why most of us don't under, most of us, we are afraid of the sudden death. There is a death more deadly than that, one that kills you gradually. Mm -hmm. It's like Chinese torture. Mm -hmm. Your spirit, man, becomes weaker, and your soul becomes more devoured. And your body become more decrepit, and your life, you see, dispensate, just like water just go through a, a calendar. Mm. But because it's gradual, you don't realize it. But and the second, because you don't know all you're capable of being, you don't realize how much you're losing. So Jesus go, I gotta deliver you before all of you drain through the calendar, and there's nothing left in there. Anybody who ever cook rice and you drain it out of the water, you understand what I'm talking about. Mm. You got, I got to get you out of that calendar before there's nothing what? Left of you. Just like God, after Jesus was delivered to death, he goes, I'm going to raise you before death can complete what? Consume you. You see, and you're going to look at death and go, oh, death, where is your sting? Mm -hmm. And as you raise, as I raise, you understand, the children of your pain, your travail, they will look at death and say, oh, death, where is your sting? Amen? Amen. Hmm. Now, Unlike Jesus, because we are born in the death cycle, Jesus was born in the life cycle, not in sin, then placed into the death cycle, then raised out of it. We are born into the first Adam. We are reborn again in the life cycle. Amen. But we are born into the death cycle. Yeah. We are born degenerated. This is why all kind of birth defects yeah. are the symbol, the effects of death. Yeah. You understand? So Jesus got, I got to deliver you out of there. You see, but what Jesus was different from us in this. Sense. Jesus was strong enough that death couldn't take him. And he was righteous enough that legally death can't claim him. Because he wasn't committing any what? Sin. And this is why he got, I can't put down my body, but I'm strong enough to take it from death. But he got, which one of you can say that? We couldn't. When death had us, death, death had what? Had us. There's no escape. The Bible said all their life they live in fear. There was no escape from death. Jesus had the power to put it down. One, by righteousness. He didn't sin. The only way from death to get it, he had to take on the sins of what? The world. Mm -hmm. That's the legal criteria. But even then, he said, I have the power to what? Pick my body up. You can't say that. So he was delivered into a process that he had the power to come out. But the legal rights, his father said, no, you can't come out until I deliver you. Mm. So to fulfill obedience, the Bible said, even though he had the power like God, he humbled himself unto them. Yeah. He pretended he had no what? Power. Wow. That's why I tell them, isn't it true? I have legions of angels at my finger. I can stop this. But God wants to give you righteousness. And according to his decree, justice has to be paid for righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, unlike Jesus, though, as I said, who was strong enough, you're not quite in that position. You resurrect to be strong enough you know, to overcome death and to correct the process of death. The Bible says, all the dead see shall be revitalized. Mm -hmm. We have become dispenser of life. The Bible says we have a greater covenant. We are born into the Adamic death. Mm -hmm. We are dispens dispensing what? Life, we are reborn into the covenant of what? Life. Amen. Life moving through us and dispensing life. Amen? Amen? But I want to talk of a process. Uh, before I go there, I just want to take you quickly there. Go to 2 Corinthians. Give me two seconds. Because this is important for you to understand. Then I want to talk about elements. I want to talk about elements. And I'm going to move a little bit on this. It is he who has qualified us, Hallelujah. make us to be fit and worthy and sufficient as ministers and dispensers. 
So where God did, he qualify you into righteousness, then make you a dispenser of life. So what he wants you walking around is to keep dispensing life, having the living life flow around you, dispensing righteousness. The problem is we have habits of death, so we keep reverting into ways of death. So what he needs to do is remove the death from you. Just like how God dipped Jesus into the death, delivered him into the death, but then he what? The Bible says he resurrect him out of the death. Do you understand? So when you accept righteousness, God goes, you are in death. Just like how I submerged Jesus in death. But I've, by righteousness, I've placed you where? Out of death. Mm. So all your focus is supposed to do, how do I live outside of death and dispense life all the time? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm. This is the game. And this is why the Lord said, to do this, you need to be healing your mind and your spirit and your soul and your body and your life. Mm. And you need to be delivered from all the ways, the thoughts, the feeling and interplay with death. And you need to be set or right or set free, habitually staying away from that. Mm -hmm. You see, when we are falling back into traps of debt, and still being, you understand? Being slaves of debt, what's happening? One, you're properly, or not being preached to, or, or teach it properly, or see how it works, mm -hmm. and you're definitely typically not demonstrating it. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta understand that scripture carefully there that you read. You see? <clears throat> It is he who qualifies you. How are you qualified? By righteousness. The, by his death, you are qualified to stay out of death. Amen? amen? amen. You see? And then make us to, amen, fit and worthy, sufficient. How? By his second Adamic resurrection that's given to you. First, you're given righteousness. Amen. But then he needs to give you what? No sufficient empowerment. He said, now I'm going to give you the same life that Jesus had. Do you understand? Mm. A life that's supposed to break away from death. And this is what his deliverance is all about. Legally it's yours, but you need to walk it out. Walk out the crap. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible said this dispensation of a new covenant of salvation. Through Christ, not ministers of the latter, ministers of death of legal written code, yeah. but of the spirit. For the code of the law kills, but the spirit makes, amen? Makes life. Amen. So you're supposed to have life flowing in you. Life in your words. Life in your thoughts. Life in your fears. When you get. Let me tell you something. If your thought pattern is not consistently, mm. habitually about life in you and around you and the people around mm. you and the thing about you and the kingdom of life. You are still moving in debt. Mm -hmm. Though you might be decreed or accredited righteousness. Yes, yes. Imagine your credit debt has all been gone. Yes. But you're still going to a store and go. I can't buy it. My credit card is full. You're still preaching, mm -hmm. and most likely being teach mm -hmm. and being demonstrated that. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at somebody. We must be delivered from all ways of death. We must, we must be, be delivered, delivered from all ways of death. death. We are not, we are we are not. and shall not and be, shall dispensers, be dispensers, dispensating ministers, dispensating ministers of, death. of death. But we are, but we are. dispensating ministers dispensating of life. Of life. You got to understand this concept. You got to know who you are. You are, you see, decreed, accredited righteousness. Amen? Then became qualified, the Bible said fitted, meaning reorganize, restructure, remaneuver, reset up, second Adamic, rebirth. The Bible called rebirth. I could call it, you are refitted. The human God being has been what? Refitted. What do you think the Holy Spirit is doing with you? <laughs> it going, God, you're still dressed inappropriately. Let's fit you properly. Yes, yes. The Bible says you must be dressed and what? Ready. Ready. Go, let's set you up. Your head's still not set up right. And your spirit is not erect. Amen. It's like a tailor. Yes. Literally. Tailor made in you. Ooh. He said, I got to get you fit up. Why? Why is he fitting you? So you can be the appropriate dispensate, dispensing minister. Amen. Of the new covenant. Hallelujah. <laughs> we were born in the covenant of death. The only thing we could have do, the only thing we could have done was simply, let's say me and Pastor Chuck, when I was in the covenant of death, I was going to go to Pastor Chuck and say, I'm dying, and you are dying. I'm sad, and you're sad. I am nothing, and you are nothing. This is ministry. <laughs> this is the covenant of death. We recycle death. Yeah. 
But Christ goes, no, I break you away from that. Hallelujah. You know, uh, me and Pastor Joe talk a lot to me and some of you. What we call, how are you? Love and grace. Excellent. How are you? By the grace of It's the dispensation of love. I, you have to understand what happens so you know to minister to yourself and minister to others. Yes, yes, yes. The enemy beating you because you're preaching the wrong thing. We still tell the world because the preaching is what? Inappropriate. The teachings are what? Inappropriate. The demonstration are dispensation of death. The illustrations are death. We get mad at the children when they're demonstrating death, when we preach it and teach it. And demonstrate it. To God be the glory. Look at somebody and say, change is about to come. Change. So change has come. Change has come. I'm about to walk it out. I'm about to walk it out. In Jesus' name. You're a different kind of minister, people. You're a different kind of minister to yourself, to your environment. And here's the worst part. God said, listen to me. Now you're righteous. You're always in my Present. He said, you are always ministering in my presence. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? To God be the glory. Let's continue quickly. Mm. Verse 7 says, Now if the dispensation of debt, engraved in letter on stone, amen, the ministration of the law was inaugurated with such glory and splendor, that the Israelites, not able to look steadily at the face of Moses because of its brilliance and glory, amen, that was to fade and pass away. So God, anything God created is a glory tree. Yeah. So because yeah. Moses had it, he was shining. Yeah. So God, if that, which the, I mean, the first, the Ten Commandments was this, was a, was a law to mediate debt. Debt was running out of control. So God put the mediating force to manage what? Debt. It wasn't a delivering force, just a way to manage death, mm -hmm. to kind of slow it down. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have cancer, you're going through chemo. Mm -hmm. It was a chemo set up. Mm -hmm. But because it came from heaven, it was what? Brilliant! Mm -hmm. God ever administered a word to you or through someone and, say, and you go, oh God, oh God. It, it's perfect! Mm -hmm. That's the administration when it comes from above. It is excellent. Mm -hmm. It's your tears. But the Bible said, if that something to mediate death was so awesome, Look at verse 8. Why should not the dispensation of the Spirit, amen, this spiritual ministry, whose task, say it as a task. It has a task. Say my righteousness as a task. My righteousness as a task. Being fitted as a task. Being fitted as a task. Dispensation as a task. Now look what the scripture said, amen, whose task is to cause men to obtain and to be governed by the Holy Spirit, amen. Be attended with much greater and more splendor and glory. Yeah. Your ministry is greater than the Ten Commandments. Woo. That was a mediator of death. You're a dispensation of life. Mm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, I go and I see a people or a thing or a situation and it's in the operating or revolving in debt. And the Lord will speak life into it, son. You know what ministry you're in. Mm. You know how to go? And or I'm kind of what? You speak life! Dispense life! Put your hands, preach something, worship! He said, release life. Mm -hmm. Release life. Mm -hmm. It's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But you won't become good at it until you learn to stay away from death. Mm -hmm. That which righteousness deliver you, but you need a demonstration of it to understand how to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You have to stop participating in death. You're not in that covenant. You might have been born in it as Jesus was placed into it. But Jesus was raised out of it and you were also raised with him. Hallelujah. To be seated where? Amen. At the right hand of God in heavenly. Yes. You know right now you're in two places. <laughs> you're already seated and your spirit is you. Don't you think your body can contain it a little? You're seated with him there. And you're seated here. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. The water is in the pipe and the spout is here. Why is the body still here? Mm -hmm. Dispensating what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why your body is here. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be dispensing what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Because you're connected, mm -hmm. just like the, the water is connected to the, to the big tank, yes, and flow through the spout. You're connected to the tree of life and you're just dispensing what? Water 
in the arena and the areas that you administer over. Your family, your church, your community, where you are. Amen. Amen. Come, Jesus. Come Amen. talk to them today. Are you listening while I'm talking to you? Yes. Amen. The reason your body is here. You understand? Because you need to have a spot to dispense. Yes. But you are connected. Yes. Amen. But messing you up with something, you're dispensing the wrong thing. You still got a lying, devilish spirit. Minister and take to you that should never come through you. Mm, mm, mm. Are you listening to me? Yes, Lord. You are yes. accredited with righteousness. He went through terror. He didn't want to do it. He had to. Mm. So you can be righteous. <laughs> Something for man with one of you and want to say something like that. Which ministry are you in? Ministry of life. What is the task? Mm. We clearly somehow mixing it up, son. Mm. What is the task of your ministry? To dispense life so the Holy Spirit of life can control the people. Then you do that! Mm. Even you're not in the first Adamic covenant. Mm. You're in the second. Mm. You, get, you shall not mess with my glory. Mm. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. You see this process is what we call like Judah. Mm. When you understand this, the praise come out. <laughs> when you learn to walk in righteousness, you understand? It's like my brother was ministering, you understand Levi, companionship. Mm. When you start to conceptualize it, you're beginning to understand Reuben. And when you can't live without it, you're living in Simeon. Mm. You can't, you gotta hear it. Mm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Hopefully you get to Levi and you get to Judah. Where you're just praising him. You're just praising him. Hallelujah. You're just praising him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen? You see, when you catch this, you become like Peter or like myself. So I'm like, if the Lord go, well, don't you want to go go away, Lord? People ask me, why are you so steadfast? Why don't you run around? Where am I going to? Didn't I see it? Don't I hear it? Aren't I experiencing Levi, the companionship? Shouldn't Judah be on my lips? Shouldn't Judah be on my lips? Hallelujah. I can't help myself. Hmm. Praise him! When you hear me, my kids laugh with me, and then you can really make a song. And when you got as much to praise for as me, I got to make a song. Hallelujah. Judah must sing. Judah must praise. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So we need to understand. The secret of being effective and staying deliverance, you have to understand elements. You have to understand element. Amen. There's an element conducive. Amen. Of debt, the administration of debt. And, and, and there are elements conducive to what Jesus talked about in John 15. Remain in me so you can keep, yes, sir, in alignment with the dispensation of life. Amen. You have to understand elements. And you have to understand temptation that can translate you from one element into another or dimension. And I want to use this analogy to, to, to show you this. Fishes are in water. Human beings are above. They're in two different elements. And two different process and medium manage them. Mm -hmm. But when a fisherman wants to catch a fish, he has to bridge the element. Mm -hmm. So he gets a rod with a line and a hook and place it into the other element. He don't go in the air himself. Mm -hmm. He's hoping the fish will bite something, a foreign object in its element. Mm -hmm. You see, and he can bring it into his element. Mm -hmm. Now if the fish should bite the hook, the fisherman there don't leave the fish there. He tries to draw them what? Out of his dimension into what? Is dimension. Mm. Temptation is not the more the enemy just like he did with Adam and Eve. I've placed something in your surrounding. You understand? And a lot of times it's people, things, and situation close to you to see if you'll bite. Mm. And it's always to pull you out of the dispensation of life and to draw you into the places of death. Somebody give you something to get you hungry and you want to dispense death. Mm -hmm. Somebody said something that make you feel bad and you're so guilty you want to dispense death in yourself or in the atmosphere. You're forgetting the ministry. But yeah. if you stay in your ministry where there's life all the time, you'll remember. So what Satan tried to do is place the hook mm -hmm. and draw the fish. Mm -hmm. But the Bible teaches us, Jesus said, listen to me. The only thing he said, he'll keep, the Bible said temptation will always what? Come. come. Trials will always what? Come. come. Tribulation. Which means the hook's going to keep getting what? Thrown in. In the water. Mm -hmm. Eve was in Eden. And temptation came what? In Eden. Are you listening? Job was minding his own business. Mm. Jesus was in, his, in, in, in the mountains 
Doing to do is fast him by himself, and the enemy give him a what? A visit. Yeah. It will come. Sure. How many, now many you're busy, you're focused, and he come and talk to you, you're like, why do you bother me? I'm busy. Mm. He don't care. Mm. The Bible says temptation shall come. Mm. Trials and tribulations shall come. Mm. It's coming. Mm. It's going to come. Mm. You say, hook's going to keep letting in the water, but you don't need to bite. Mm. It's a foreign object. Return it to what? Send it. I never see the shiny thing, so I return you to sender. This is not conducive with life. I return you to sender. But the Bible said, Jesus said, if the strong man was awake, then the thief couldn't come in and rob. Because you see, if he get all of you, you understand? If he get all of you, he's going to draw you into your dimension and take advantage. He's going to take away your freedom that you used to be able to administer life and do things and situate and operate in a certain way. You see, but the Bible says if the strong man was alive, then the thief would not able to rob. You see, if you are built up in the administration that you, sh that you are in righteousness and understand, if Seth, he hooked you, instead of he pulling you into his dimension, you can pull him into what? Yours. You ever see those big fish, those fishermen? The fish bite the fisherman hook and the fish pull the fisherman into the river? You need to be that fish. When he come after you, you need to go, be careful, I'm a big fish. Things that hook me, come follow me. Mm -hmm. Things that hook me, don't throw me here and throw me there. Mm -hmm. You be careful where you put that hook. Mm -hmm. You see, I grew up on a farm and we used to, I, we lasso cows. Mm -hmm. There's some cows that are strong. When I lasso them, they're dragging me and the horse. Mm -hmm. There's some I can steer quite easy. You got to let him know it's like a local, you're like a local motor, motion train. That if he hook into you, mm -hmm. you ain't going his way. Hallelujah. He's coming what? Your way. Mm -hmm. Because he that's within you is greater than he in the world. Yeah. Give me your faith. Hallelujah. He should be afraid to hook into what? You. Man. When he hook into you, you see, there's some, sometimes for the fisherman to be safe, he has to cut what? The line. Yeah, yeah. He going to abort this fish. When he hooks into you, he must abort the line. Mm -hmm. You see, he might hook you. There are many times he keeps trying to hook Jesus to kill him. Mm -hmm. But he keeps having to abort. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, there's a fish in, and you've got to understand your enemy. This is why you should not be playing with him. He's deadly. There's a fishing called sport fishing. Anybody familiar with it? In sport fishing, they catch the fish, and then they throw them back into the water to yeah. live. Here's the secret of sport fishing. You gotta be very skillful at taking the hook out of the fish that you don't damage the fish or you kill the fish. But Satan don't do sports fishing. He practice something called lethal fishing. Yeah. Every time he fish, he's trying to kill you. Yeah. He, he don't do sports fishing. Uh -uh. He, he wanna get you out of the water, out of your element, where you can dry up and die. The sport is killing you. If he do lethal fishing, yes. every time his hook pass close you, it's a move to death. Thank God we have the great physician. That if he put his hook in us, you see, because we drag him and you have to cut the line, the great physician can remove the hook like sport, sport fishing, mm -hmm. and we don't get damaged. Hallelujah. Though we fall seven times, seven times. we get back up. Thank you, Jesus. You understand me? So you have to understand, he wants to get you into his element. In essence, he wants you to become a minister of death. Yes. He wants you to preach death to yourself, teach death to yourself, practice death to yourself. Even better, teach it to your family, your children, and your generation. The more, the better. The more influential you are, the more he wants you to be a minister, his minister. And if he can't get you to be a minister of death, then he wants to what? Kill you. Eager, mm -hmm. lethal fishing, harpoon style. Mm. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But Jesus said, remain in me, and he can't harm you. You have to understand. Don't make him drag you into his element. You drag him where he can't survive. He can't stand the truth. Okay. Oh, the Bible said, yeah, his, 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 his first his language is what? He's the father of life. His native, his natural conceptualization is what? Life. So truth doesn't work what? In his program. So when you drag him into your water, you understand? Mm -hmm. Like you put him in there to say that he can't stand it. Mm -hmm. He don't want to hear no truth. Mm -hmm. The more lies, the more he loves it. Mm -hmm. Drag him into your water. If he hooked into you, go, 
I notice she put a climb to me. Okay, we're going to the dispensation ranks of the life. Holy way. We're yes. going to the holy way. <laughs> he will cut the line. Yes. He's afraid to change. Amen. You understand? Don't let him drag you out. Uh -huh. If he drag you out, you understand? He just might re reform you. Amen. He will preach to you. Amen. He was preaching to Jesus. Ah, come on, you're the son of God. You have power. Turn these rocks into bread. Jesus said, I could, however, it is said, man does not live by bread alone. Jesus preached a different message. You think I'll make him go, he still talks. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. Yeah. He always wants to preach something. Mm -hmm. Amen? So you have to understand, the struggle, first of all, you said, Jesus, Jesus will do this, but he'll get you out of there, and he'll accredit you. Mm -hmm. As, as, as a dispensation ministry of life, your struggle is to make sure he does not get you into his element. Unless you are sent by the Lord to take over his element. Take over his element is nothing. God sent you to preach, dominate into this area. God sent you to teach, dominate in this area. God sent you to demonstrate, dominate. God sent you to discipleship. What's discipleship? I'm sending them out with what I've preached, teach, and demonstrate. Mm -hmm. If not, you have no right being in those areas. Yes. You got to understand it. I tell you, and I'll give you the scripture before you go, you need to understand Reuben, mm. learn to see it. Mm -hmm. You need to understand Simeon, learn to, and love to, hear it. Mm -hmm. You need to understand Levi, love the companion of life. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. Can't do it, out it. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're out of it, you should feel like fish out of water. Mm -hmm. Just like something, you know, start to go nuts, kind of. Mm -hmm. You're like a seizure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then you shall live in Judah. Amen. Your lips shall be filled with praise. In Jesus' name. I just want to do one more scripture today. We're not going to be able to finish it. You know, the Lord, I tell you, Father, you're just awesome. In the name of Jesus. Touch somebody and say, remind me who I am all the time. Remind me who I am all the time. And through the grace that has been given to me. In the name of Jesus. I shall not forget. I'm in a covenant of life. A new covenant. A glorious covenant. I'm in the dispensation ministry. I dispense life. You understand? You understand? I tell you, I tell you, you need to check yourself and see how much you like spending time with God. If if you can go to a place and people don't love having you there, I can't wait for you because you are a breath of fresh air. Why is it? Because light flows out in you, Adam. You are passionate. You know how many people are asking, can I put you in my pocket? Can you come and stay with me? Can I come and live with you? Almost every day somebody's asking me to come and live with me. Why? Is it me? No. It is the administration that flows through me, Anna, wrong. It is the administration that I love to see, hear, cling to, love the fellowship, and I can't stop talking about it. It is the only difference. There was a time they should run from me, and I used to run from me, because all I was administering is dead. Hallelujah! Yeah. We talked last week, remember, like Jesus was placed into death, you understand? Even though you didn't ask for it. Like it or not, because of what our forefathers do, you are placed and born into death. Mm -hmm. You are placed, just like Jesus, subject into death. Mm -hmm. But by grace, you are delivered out of death. Amen. And accredited with righteousness. Amen. And inaugurated into the ministry of the dispensation of life. Amen. So what you are prayer should be to God, Lord. I know you have accredited me with righteousness and you have inaugurated me into the ministry of life. Help me to think life and feel life and speak life. Help me to preach life and teach life and demonstrate life and disciple life. Help me to, that's glory for him. When you are doing, when you are preaching life, teaching life, demonstrating life and discipling life, meaning multiplying life, marketing life, you are, saying, you are bringing him what? Glory. On what? On all phases. Yes. There are many phases. There's the phases of preaching it. There's the phases of teaching it. There's the phases of demonstrating it. Do you understand me? I'm multiplying it. You hear what I'm saying? Mm. 
You know, sometimes, I do not the man of God, I have my issues. A lot of people I feel like to be at my house, and sometimes I go, God, does this home ever look like? There's so many people. And you go, where do you want them to go? In the realms of death? So where, where do you want them to go? You tell me, where should we send them? You know who we are, what we do. It quickly humbles me. Amen? You let them come to the life. You should be focused on, dis on, on distribution. You're still not distributing enough life as you should. You love Levi. You love Judah. What about the dispensation? Some of you who are walking close to me, you know what our church is focused on. We are heavily focused on the distribution of life. Yes. It's one thing to see it, hear it, living in it, fellowshipping with it, and praising about it. How much do you share it? Jesus walk around this dispense in it. That's what's called upon you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? My mind is there. Every day my mind and my thoughts revolve. This typically you have to fight me to break me away from it. How do I distribute what? Life. I praise those that are doing it. I give, give God glory for them. But I'm never forgetting the call upon our life. Because equally the Spirit is good. And you, what are you doing? Yes, yes. You got to do this. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. This is why I'm here. Spend more time with me. Come slow with me so you get it done. Mm -hmm. There's only one way I can fail. I fail to distribute the dispensation of love. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I could get a beating for. Righteousness I have. That's a lockdown. Mm -hmm. Inauguration on lockdown. Mm -hmm. The challenge for the church is dispensation of what? I want to read one scripture and then let's close. We're going to do tithing. I wish I could preach to you all day. I know I'm in my genre because I can do this all day, literally. Literally, not figuratively. Time disappear when I am talking, when I am preaching, teaching, or demonstrating, or discipling. Time, I have to put like physical restraint on myself. Or by Allah say, listen to me, you must stop me at this point. You must. Because when you come to preaching, teaching, demonstrating, and discipling all day, and those who are close to me, they're just like me. Pastor Charles is no help. <laughs> just like me. You can do it all day. Can't ask him to restrain me. <laughs> he encourages me. Ah, oh, come on, go for it. I'm like, no, no, they can't, can't, we can't give it to them now, Lord. <laughs> no help. I love that man. Amen. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> In Jesus' name. Four hours preaching. You, you will understand, Brother Paul, I can do it all night. You know, if you ever was to figure out how do I know what you, who you've been talking to or what you've been thinking or saying, you see, your face reveals which administration you're moving in. And typically, I can look at you and within one second, I go, uh-oh, you have somehow forgot righteousness and true inauguration. You might have been born into it, but you don't need to stain it. This is all like they have been reborn. Mm. Amen? Mm. As for me, mm. I am poor and needy. Why? Because I am born into the low Adamic mm -hmm. state. Mm. Yet the Lord take thoughts and plans for me. As for me, I might have been born in the Adamic state. Born in sin. Steeped in sin, the Bible said. Yet, the Lord process thoughts. He flows thoughts towards me. Yes. He makes plan for me. Yes. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. This is why the Bible says, God said, I love the humble. I love those with humility. What is proud? Proud is I am born into sin. I'm steeped in sin. I'm getting handled. All I dispense is death to me, my family, and anything that touched me. No one or nothing should come close. And I'm proud. You know, are you kidding me? You're as lost as lost can be. Mm -hmm. No. You got to humble yourself and go, as for me, I am poor and needy, yet the Lord, because the enemy will go, look at you, you're poor, nothing happening, you'll never do it. This, this way you go, I might be poor and needy, mm -hmm. yet the Lord flows thoughts towards me. Mm -hmm. Yet the Lord is making plans for me. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, he's talking about me. 
talking about me. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus. It says, uh, yet the Lord takes thoughts and plans for me. You are my help. Amen. And my what? Deliverer. Deliverer. <coughs> oh my God. Do not be late. Do not tarry. Do not tarry. You have a deliverer. You have a deliverer who flows thoughts towards you and planning for you. Every time you slip back into the covenant of death, he snatches you. Every time you bite the hook and the enemy try to pull you into the element, he cuts the line. Every time the enemy do lethal fishing on you, the great physician take the hook out. Every time the enemy is drawing you in closer to his element, the, 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 the father grabs you and pulls you and pulls him over. He cancels his assignment. <laughs> the Bible said in 1 John 5, 18, the enemy can't get a grip on you. Hallelujah. He keeps trying to hold you. Mm. He can't get a grip on you. He keeps trying to hold you. Amen. But the Constitution says every time he tries, mm. Jesus maneuvers you. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Because, you see, the, you see, the enemy was an archangel. And he got big and bad and stronger and more powerful. But though he is, the Lord is consistently sending thoughts. This is why I started this process. I said, we misrepresent God, making him like an ogre. Hmm. That is a lie. Hmm. 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 When you were away from God, he didn't, have, he didn't manifest his redeeming. He was making plans and thoughts. He got, I got to get back my children made in my image. Oh, the enemy stole them from me, and he's making them do such terrible things. But he go, I'm flowing thoughts, I'm forming, I am for them, I'm going to use Jesus to get them back. He was making plans. And when the plans came to their full maturity, the closing of the age, he manifest the plan. And he atoned you. Yes. And he decreed righteousness. And he inaugurated you into a ministry. And he gives you a spirit to guarantee that ministry. Hallelujah. You see, you see, what he's always saying, daughter, son, mm. I have plans and thoughts yeah. towards you mm. and for you. Mm. It is the Jeremiah 29, 11. Amen. He said, he said, I'm for, he said, and I shall not be late. Hallelujah. You see, the enemy is always trying to get all of you that you start, that somehow you stop going, the Lord is for me, the Lord make your plan, and you start going, oh God, I'm going to die, I'm going to this. Then he got, got it. Now they're in the ministry of death. This is like, God, don't be late. Yeah. Don't be late. I know you're for me. No matter what I'm going through. No matter, you see, I guarantee Job ought to pray like this. The enemy kill all of Job's children. Destroy his riches. Destroy his body. I guarantee you, Job ought to be going something like this. No matter what, do you break me. I know you're for me. Do you break me? I know you're for me. Do you break me? You shall not be late to rescue me. Do you break me? I know you're flowing thoughts and plans. So that's what faith is. Faith is, you know what, you know what we call faith? Nothing happening. And oh, I have faith in God. No. The Bible says, consider it pure joy when your faith is being tested. Meaning, no matter what happened, you still understand God is for you. Hallelujah. Which one? What did you just say? Basically, um, be joyful in trials and tribulations. That is James 1, 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. Amen. You've got to understand this process. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you have or had went through. What I need you to remember, the Lord taught some plans are all with for you, and he shall not be let. You consider it pure joy. When the, the enemy, what he's always trying, just like this is what this is what your wife telling. Listen, you're in the administration of life. Turn back to the administration of death. Cuss God. He go, do you break me? I will not go back to the administration of death. Yeah. Do you slay me? Mm. Some of you are gonna go through something, but despite what you go through, what I'm telling you, the Lord shall not be late. He is for you. Amen. Amen. He is for you. Amen. Look at somebody in the eyes and say, the Lord is for you. The Lord is for you. He flows his thoughts and is making plans about you and towards you in Jesus' name. 
Say, I've received that. I received that. You've got to notice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stop there today I in Jesus' it. name. It. In Jesus' name. Really we can do this all day. Amen? Amen. I leave you with a summarization. Is travail, is death, give you righteousness? Understand this. What you call I am born again, it meaning you have been placed, inaugurated, just like our president get inaugurated, placed into a position of a ministry of life. You di the rain what? Dispense. Mm -hmm. You dispense life to others, to your environment, and to you. Amen. You ask my wife again. Some people like pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. I like the pictures of the word of God. I like the scriptures. Why? Mm -hmm. I want dispensation atmosphere. Look at the church. Look at it. Look at it. Mm -hmm. We like what? Life. I want things to remind me that God is for me what? All the time. If he had permitted tattoo, I would tattoo it all over myself. But he goes, no, 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 you can't write it yourself. So I write it on things around me. You understand what I'm saying? You see, you need to have the discipline. And then you need to lower. And as I said, I did promise you I would give you that. This is the name of four of Lee's son, J Jacob, Jacob um, was in love with Rachel, mm -hmm. but the father gave the older sister, the Bible referred to her as the ugly one, mm -hmm. um, to him, said, I can't leave my pretty one and not the ugly one, mm -hmm. and she was, they treat her bad, and she was crying out, so God gave her four sons in this component, and the first one was Reuben. Meaning I see, God see my travail. His name means, mm -hmm. in the Hebrew language, remember, a person's name reflects the character Amen. of the person. That's what it means. So, she named him in alignment with exactly, and I said, he said I, I love the ancient. Mm -hmm. What they say is what they say. <laughs> now, this is what people say and what they do are two different things. Yeah. They, they match, they mirror. They were integral. He said, Reuben, because I can't see, God saw my travail, my punishment, so, or my challenges. So I'm naming my son exactly that. It, it, it's like the woman that named Jabez. Mm -hmm. She was having a real bad pregnancy. So she named him Sorrow Maker. This son brings me a lot of sorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best name, but she named <laughs> My point is, it was what it is. They're honest. They're honest. <laughs> they didn't, you know, cover it up with some lies. You know, she go, God see my challenges? So I'm naming him Reuben. Mm -hmm. See. I see, God see. Amen? Then she was, going, she was like going through some challenge and nobody hearing her. You know, so God give her another son. She named him Simeon. I hear. God hears. Hears me when I talk to him. God hears me. Then Jacob wanted to spend all of his time with Rachel. Give her another son. Then a Levi. Companionship. Some of us need a Levi move. Some of us are lonely. And you know that God said, it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good. You understand? Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm looking for a wife for one of my sons. I'll yeah. tell you later. <laughs> Anyhow, not good for a man to be alone. So, <laughs> Levi, the middle of my sermon. Levi, companionship. And then finally, if you walk with you God all the time, <laughs> I have many sons and daughters, you know this. Um, um, if you walk with God, you will live in a consistent you know, and perpetual way of praise. Because no matter what happened, you'll find he's not late. He's delivering you. Yes. I tell you, the yes. amount of time the enemy nearly get me, <laughs> the amount of time he nearly pulled me into his element, oh, thank you, Jesus. and the great physician kept that hook out of me, saving me, never late, is for me. The amount of time I mess up the thoughts and God said, no, use this plan, not that plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Taking us to Judah right now. Hallelujah. He to just praise Amen. <laughs> Come on. We are going to live in a, you can't live in a consistent state of praise unless you're hearing the preaching, yeah. observing the teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Paying attention to the demonstration and going forth and illustrating it, walking it out. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, you'll say, Reuben, I got you. Mm -hmm. Simon, I understand you. Levi, I love you. Mm -hmm. Judah, I will release you. Release the praise.
See, Sister Sharon is the Judahite. She yes. loves to praise. Yes. Then you better love Levi. Amen. You got to love companionship because praise comes out of companionship. Mm -hmm. If you can't see it, what are you going to praise about? You understand? If you can't see it, you'll be like Jabez. You'll go, this is a sorrowful walk. Mm -hmm. I see some Christian, ex some kingdom citizens, all that speak like this Jabez. Why? They're missing Levi, companionship. Mm -hmm. Jesus' disciples, they, they were walking with him, and as a result, they were seeing so much. They were praising and dancing. And the other teachers go, control your disciple. They're like Judah freaks. And you go, if they don't praise after what they're seeing, I'll raise the rocks. They must sing. You understand what I'm saying now? Mm. Psalm 40, 17, he is my deliverer. Hallelujah. He is for me. The enemy, what he is forever trying to do with you, just like he did with Job, he goes to God. I guarantee you, if you let me attack them, they will go back to death. Mm. And God is always trying to develop your faith to God. No matter what they go through. Notice, no matter what Jesus go through, mm. even when those, he said... He had the right to call for death upon them. Call the angel and say, destroy them. He got, I will not enter the realms of death that way. Hallelujah. Stephen the same, he got, forgive me. Oh. He got, I know you're summoned me to call death on you. This is why Jesus had told them in Luke 9, when they go, let's call them death and destroy the city. He goes, which ministry do you think you're in? Mm -hmm. But this goes personal and cooperate. Mm -hmm. It is both. Let's stand for prayer. Hallelujah. must learn to hear the Spirit of the Lord. You have to learn, like Lee, who named her son Simeon. Mm -hmm. You need to learn. It's going to be hard yes. for you to have Levi companion mm -hmm. if you can't hear him. Mm -hmm. The secret of hearing him, you have to really want to. He gives you the ability, but you have to want it. Mm -hmm. And you have to want to stop participating in death in yourself or death in others or death, death things and situations. Mm -hmm circumstance because he deals with life amen? amen the Lord wants you to see why he made you to participate in life mm -hmm. he needs you to see that you have been accredited with righteousness through Jesus travail he needs you to see amen mm -hmm. that you are now in the administration and the dispensation of life mm -hmm. hallelujah mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus the Lord is decreed in today, you shall preach to yourself and to others Amen. life. That those who believe in Jesus has been accredited with righteousness. Mm -hmm. You shall teach them how to understand and you'll be patient with them till they understand that they must stop thinking, feeling and acting and walking out death. Mm -hmm. You will be an example through the Spirit of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit. And you must disciple them, teach them how to do it. Notice, I just don't want to do these things. I want you to be able to do it. If not, I have failed to disciple you. Mm -hmm. Preaching is one thing. Teaching is one thing. Mm -hmm. Illustration is another. But it must move to discipleship. Mm -hmm. If not, we do not spread and multiply and distribute. Mm -hmm. You should fight for every soul because we are either dispensers of death or we are dispensers of life. Mm -hmm. If any one of you is sick, call the church together. Amen. And tell the church to decree it. Mm. Call the dispensation, meaning the vault. Those who have water, fill in them. They're connected to the... All they need is turn on the pipe. Mm. And when you utter us, mm. so it shall be. Amen. 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 Do not forget Amen. that principle. Amen. Let's celebrate the dispenser. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name.